and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schwab, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. And together we are the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Brad, today you want to talk about, well, you are the master of this, by the way. I, I do concede to you. Okay, well, you know, it's basically in our opinion then, Bob. Right, it is. <laughs> but uh, also, you're the only one that can say it. Spondylolisthesis. Well, Not getting close? I've looked it up and I've Googled it. And from what I can tell, it's spondylolisthesis. Okay, spondylolisthesis. <laughs> <laughs> and and he is the master because he's had it for how many years would you say that? Well, I've been diagnosed for him. approximately 10 years. I've known I've had it longer than that, but we'll get into that more. But before we get in, there's people out there wondering. They're, they haven't seen us before. Hi. Um, and no, this isn't a mistake. Um, if you want to subscribe to us, we have a subscribe button over here on the left side of Brad, your right side. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, and pain-free from professional physical therapists, and we upload every day. Absolutely. Okay, so spondylolisthesis, this is a diagnosis with the low back, and we're spending more time on it, not just because I have it, but because 5 to 7% of the people in the United States is estimated to have. That's a lot. Right. And there are some people who have a mild form of it, they, they don't even know it. You know, I had it sure. for a number of years before I knew I had it, um, but we'll talk about what is it, and it's causes back pain and there's certain things that you do not want to do and it's going to make your back hurt and there's certain things that's going to make you feel better but I'm going to talk today about why can I, why you cannot fix this in just a matter of a couple of weeks. Sure. Uh, yeah, this isn't something you go to a chiropractor and he's going to make adjustments and it's right. going to fix. I did that. Yeah. It was a mistake. <laughs> Uh, well, it wasn't a bad mistake, I, but we can, I don't know if I'll talk about that anymore, but let's get into uh, uh, what is it? Let's look at the spine once. And here's the picture. This, this is me on an x-ray. Okay. In my in your opinion. <laughs> in my opinion, of course, Bob. So we're looking at the lumbar spine. If we look at here, so we're talking about the low back right here. If we look at the model of the spine right here, um, in my case, it's between L4 and L5. Okay, it can be between L5, L5 and S1, but we're going to, and actually on here I drew it L304 because it's easier to see. There's five lumbar vertebrae, right. five low back vertebrae, right. basically. And so what we're talking about is having a literal shift of one vertebra on top of the other in the forward direction. Um, so we're looking at this. I'll get a little closer. Could you zoom in pretty good? Sure, I can zoom. Line. Right there. So if you look at this vertebra here above the red disc, it literally shifts forward and slides across one bullet, and it's not supposed to be that way. It causes pain. You can call it. So we can go this way, right? Yeah, nerve impingement, and this is our nice model of two lumbar So vertebra. this is normal. It should be lining up straight, but it actually shifts forward. Right. And the amount of shift is how they give it degrees, right, right. Brad? First, you know, what, 25, First 50. degree is 25%, second degree is 50, so on and so forth. 25% of the cup. Right. So that'd be 50, right. that'd be grade two, right? Right. And, you know, they're kind of guessing at this. Right. You can look by the x-rays and get a pretty close estimate. So, um, but the thing is, the spinal cord runs right through here. So ha as it shifts, there might be some pinching of some nerves in there, we'll which this way, cause right. pain. So the spinal cord runs through there. Right through here. Yeah. And so if I shift, can you see how that would make it a little difficult yeah. for that I don't know if they're going to be able to see that in the camera, <laughs> but, you know, she, th it was a good thought. It was a good idea. Good. So let's take a look at this on my homemade x-ray here. Well, one thing, Brad, oh, no, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. I mean, do you want to talk about the causes? Because this was interesting Good to me. point, right. There, there's four causes, four primary causes, cause, four, four main causes. I believe trauma is probably at the top of the list. And oh, that's what happened with me. Oh, it was trauma with you. Yeah, I was kneeboarding. I was going like this behind a boat, getting pulled. Ah. My legs were strapped onto a kneeboard. I don't know if you know what a kneeboard is, but uh. if you do, you'll know what happened. I jumped the wake, I was in the air holding on to the rope, and the tip of the board, which strapped my knees into this locked, flexed position, caught the water and pulled me back, and oh I was holding God. on to the rope, and it was pulling my knees underneath me, my back here, and I went like that, let go, and I splashed face first into the water. You're lucky you're not paralyzed. Hyperextended my back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I never knew that, Brad. Yeah. I, I mean, I think this is very interesting on the causes because um, I, I think the one that I see the most is degenerative. You know, sure. It's, it's just, it's developed over time. Right. And it's slim. You, you, and it's you get it when you're in your yeah, you're you're quite 50s, 60s, 60s or 70s. 70s yeah. Right. 
because uh, I know I had a good healthy spine when I was 23 because I had x-rays and then this happened in my late 20s. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was still a daredevil at the time, you know. <laughs> uh, the next thing is degeneration. We talked about the aging process, things slipping. Sure. Um, a tumor, you know, if you have a tumor, it could cause this. That's probably not as common. Yeah. And then a birth defect, you know, you had it from when you right, were born. Right, just something genetic you right. were born with. Yeah. All right, so we're going to look at why this does not... Uh, be cured just like that. You're not going to go to the chiropractor and get this fixed. You're not going to do exercises and in a month get it fixed. Because you have the shift right here we talked about. Here's three, two, one. These lumbar spines, everything is shifted forward. Okay, right here we're going forward like that. We need, to, you're not going to shift it back. If you move that back, you'll probably be in a lot of pain sure. for a long time. But what you can do is stabilize this. And there are muscles that we have to stabilize in the front. Anything that moves the person in extension or this direction is going to be uncomfortable. Could make it shift more, is what right. you're saying. Right, exactly. Friend. When you extend backwards, yeah, hey, Bob, you're exactly right. The force goes this way and can make it worse. That's why it hurts. Like with me, if I wash a ceiling after about a half hour, I'm not a happy person. My back is in pain for the next day or so. And that's why it feels better. Right. It flex forward. So my wife washes yeah. the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's all sorts of excuses. Right, exactly. So what we want to do is we want to build up muscles in the front part of the body, of the abdomen, the core. Sure. The other thing is hopefully, like in my case, I have no disc between here anymore. I'm hoping these two bones fuse over time. And from my last x-rays, it appears that there may be some of this going on. So if we can get some of that going on right there, that's a good thing. We talk about this all the time, how the body is a wondrous thing. I mean, it, it will correct things eventually if right. you enough time. Right. I mean, it, it finds a way to... And you treat it properly. Right. right. So in this case, properly. you're not going to do a lot of extension. You're going to do a lot of core exercises for your stomach. One muscle group that's important that you address is the iliopsoas muscles, Bob. And you know why that is. I'm going to draw a picture where they connect to the bones. They actually connect to the spine in the front. I'm kind of drawing roughly here. And I'm going to look into the pelvis. They actually go and connect up to the femur, and they're responsible for flexing your hip or your femur. So They also stabilize the spine. Don't right, they? exactly. Yeah. So we want to build these muscles up, and you can see if you build these muscles up how it's going to add support to the... It's funny you say this, Brad, because I, I had in my mind that I'm going to do a video on iliopsoas muscle. Oh, Come there on. you go. Yeah. So we're so going to build up that iliopsoas. Um, the next thing is the muscles that connect... Here, the anterior from your rib cage down to your pelvis, you know, the rectus abdominis, you want to work not just those, but you want to work the transverse, the obliques. The obliques. Yeah. But we want to make this very solid. Get these muscles built up, these muscles built up. Hopefully, you get some fusion if you have bone to bone between the vertebrae. And all this added up will make solidify that and make a nice... Keep you stable. Exactly. Um, and this is what I feel I have had because... I had problems. I couldn't run anymore. Uh, I could, but very limited. Walking at three-fourths of a mile, I'd get pain down my leg because one of the nerves would be pinched. So I started doing my exercise routine, which we do have a couple but of it. It's finally improving. To be honest with you, I don't think I'll ever be symptom-free, but I can manage it now, and I can live pretty right. normal. Exactly. You, know, you, you had a fairly good shift, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got so. x-rays, and we got those as yeah. well. The other thing is people have been talking as far as Braces. Do you need a back brace uh, if you have this? I'm saying it's an option, but this is the core. The core exercises in treating yourself without extension. Would Do it be fair to say, Brad, that maybe you'd want to use the brace initially when you're starting off? I mean, if you're really having trouble with right. back pain, if you're, you if you're in the acute phase, exactly. Yeah, in the acute phase. Right. And I'm going to show you one back brace, and I've used quite a few different back braces over the years, and this particular back brace is, is definitely right up there in my favorite one, actually. So and this, this is by Braceability. I'll put it down below. Right. They've, they've been a, we've been a big fan of theirs. They have really nice quality braces. Yep, exactly. I'm going to put this on. I'm going to show you why I think it's great. Now, well, what I, is this one called, Brad? This is called the Sport Spine. The Sport Spine, okay. Spine Sport. Spine Sport. Okay. Now, you're going to see why I like this so well. I'll use this when I go mow the lawn because I get a large lawn, a riding lawnmower. Yeah, get the tie up. <laughs> we don't want to be uh, that way. Look presentable. 
So okay. you wear it when you're riding the lawnmower? Right, because I've got a lawnmower, a bumpy lawn, sure. no suspension. Keep the stability. And it takes yeah. an hour and a half to do it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so I, if I was really smart, I would only mow half of it at a time. But, but it's that's not, not my, it's not no my that, personality. That's the only thing that's going to happen. <laughs> Bob knows me too well. Okay. So uh, we'll get that out. Yeah. All right. So watch this. Why don't you show what's going on yeah. back there, Bob? So if you look at this, the two components here, and watch as he pulls. They, they pull together, and they really, oh. It feels good right now, Bob. Support. It feels like good support. Yeah. Now, if I wore this all day long like this, it would get uncomfortable. It would tend to weaken my core muscles and change everything I've been working on for the last three right. years with my exercises. So when I'm doing something that's going to, like, go ride my lawnmower for, for an hour and a half or whatever, then I'm going to keep it tight. But even then, when I get off to do something to walk, I'm going to loosen it up. Yeah. Look how easy it, it loosens That's what's up. nice about that yeah. is you can just constantly work on tightening or loosening. Yeah. I mean, just with a flip of a right. A so wrist. if you're doing some work and you're, you're walking around, but every so often you need to bend over and bend and pick something up, that's when you're going to crank it down. Still use good body mechanics, but boy, it feels good to have that support. So this is, this is by far one of my favorite braces. The other ones that have elastic, I think they're good too. But this one really cinches up. Yeah, this one cinches so, up a little bit better. All right, again, you can find braceability down below if you'd like to take a look at their braces. And uh, Brad, anything else? Well, Bob, you know, we really got this down to a pretty good science, but we're still working on that. Yeah, we have trouble fixing a broken heart. Yeah, but I think we can get that. This could lead into it. Look how close we are anatomically. Yeah, we're working on it. Thanks.